So let's say you're playing this hand. You have queen jack offsuit on the button, playing two five, you open, big blind three bets, you decide to call. Flop comes nine five deuce rainbow, they see about half pot. Think about what you would do in this situation and then let's talk about it using a little bit of math. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to answer a question sent out by Joe that has to do with this exact hand. So here's the question. Joe asks this, in this exact situation, let's say the flop does come nine five deuce rainbow. Opponent bets half pot, giving me three to one odds. With two over cards, I have 24% equity to make top pair by the river. Here's where I'm confused. He's offering me the three to one odds to see the turn, but my equity is only close if I consider both the turn and the river. So, if my odds of hitting on the turn are roughly 12%, do I have to fold to the bet on the flop? So Joe, this is a very fair question, and really what it boils down to is the 4-2 rule. So if you're familiar with this, great. If not, a quick definition of the 4-2 rule is if you want to estimate how often your hand is going to improve, you take your number of outs remaining, you multiply that either by two if you expect to only see one card, or you multiply it by four if you expect to see both the turn and river card, and that gives you your estimated chance of improving. Now, very, very quick and a very important clarification when it comes to your question, is you estimated that this hand has 24% equity in this situation, and that's actually not true. What the 4-2 rule is estimating is your chance of improving. Now, if you're improving to a really, really strong hand, like a flush or a full house, something like that, something where if you improve to it, you're almost certainly going to have the winning hand, the terms equity and your hand improving, those two things can overlap significantly. Those two numbers can be quite close. Whereas in a hand like this, that's definitely not the case, because let's just say that we do improve to top pair here, right the turn is a queen whatever well if we pull out flopzilla real quick and we start clicking around if you kind of keep your eyes down here so we have the hand set up right here we have our queen jack we have the board nine five deuce if you keep your eyes down here against a couple different ranges watch what happens right so if we say our opponent just has queens plus ace king you notice that yes we're still going to improve the roughly 12 percent of the time on the turn and roughly 24 percent of the time by the river but our equity is only what 14 percent that's nowhere close to 24 percent in fact if we thought they were even tighter maybe they were just three betting with kings plus preflop and i think that's very very tight in this exact situation but let's just run with it for a moment notice our equity is really really bad so we can't just look at our odds of improving and also our equity and assume that those two things are necessarily going to be the exact same thing that's just simply not true and to add just a little bit of extra clarification, again, if you're new to the 4-2 rule, we count our number of outs. So in this situation, our queen jack, the odds of improving to a top pair by the Turner River is take our six outs. So we have three remaining queens in the deck. We have three remaining jacks in the deck. So six total outs to improve. By the turn, multiply that number by two, roughly 12% chance of improving the top pair on the turn. And if we're looking at the turn and river, so maybe we're going to see both cards, then we take those six outs, multiply it by four, and that's where we get that 24 percent number and you're very very correct joe to ask the question of do i focus on the 12 percent or the 24 percent right do i focus on just seeing the turn or do i focus on seeing the turn and river and that's going to be highly dependent on your opponent right do you assume that they're going to barrel the turn a lot in which case you're probably not going to end up seeing the river you're just going to fold at that point if you don't improve that's very very fair most people use the multiply by four on the flop and really they need to be thinking about multiplying it closer to two especially against aggressive opponents who aren't going to let you you see that that final card for free or at least not for super super cheap and i did want to touch on one other important part of joe's question at the very very end he essentially asked hey in this situation if i assume i'm not going to improve often enough and i'm not getting great pot odds right this moment should i just fold and it's really really good that you're asking this question because you're trying to say hey when the math isn't perfect should i fold or are there other things that I could do? It's really, really good that you're starting at that place of being open-minded to other things and not just always looking for the quick fold button. So in a situation like this, and just in most spots where I'm getting not great pot odds right this moment, I'm really focused on two things. First and foremost, implied odds. So essentially, if we improve to a queen or a jack on the next card, can we expect to actually get paid off and make some money? And even if we don't, and let's just say that we decide to float the flop and float the turn and we improve on the river, again, could we expect to make some serious money? I'll leave a link in the description box to a video I did recently about implied odds that will help you kind of visualize the concept, also put the formula behind it, and give you a good jumping off point for interested in learning more about that. And while if our opponent is really only three betting and C betting like a really, really nutted range, like Kings Plus or whatever, yeah, 
that there's probably not going to be much in terms of implied odds because then we not only have to improve to a pair on a turn, but we also have to improve on the river as well. So that's not great, but let's just say that the turn is a queen and we think that our opponent's going to use that opportunity to barrel off with ace king high. That could be a situation where you actually are getting some implied odds on your improvement card. So definitely something that you want to be considering. And then the other thing you want to consider in a spot like this are any other plus EV lines that could be available. So looking at this situation, could you raise right this moment and maybe get your opponent to fold a lot of the nonsense hands that they decided to three bet preflop and then see bet with? Could they possibly just bet fold here too often, in which case you can make auto profit? Awesome, why not raise with queen jack here? Could you decide to float? So you call right this moment and decide that you're going to stab every single time that they check the next card, and then you just capitalize on that and win that pot. So always look to see if there are other plus EV lines available. Don't just look at, well, I don't have enough equity right this moment, given the pot odds and as such, I'm going to fold. Think about your implied odds, which really keeps you focused on what is the value of calling right this moment. And then especially think about other aggressive options you could take, especially when you're considering either raising right this moment, maybe calling now and then raising on future streets, or just floating, really planning to barrel any time that they decide to check on any real future card. So those are things you definitely want to be considering not just auto folding if you're not getting perfect math right this moment. So up to this point we've talked about a lot of mathematical terms and if you want to work on a lot of these skills especially things like pot odds and implied odds and equity I would definitely suggest picking up my poker math and prefab workbook to improve your math skills between sessions. The workbook comes with tools, a complete answer key, and examples from both cash games and tournament play. Get your copy by going to splitsuit.com math or looking for the paperback directly on Amazon. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for this question, Joe. I really hope this helps. And anyone else who has questions related to the 4-2 rule, pot odds, folding, other options, I really hope this gives you a head start. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.